This is Hidden Killers Week in Review. A look back at the most prolific stories of the week. The line between killer and hero is thinner than you think. You're listening to Hidden Killers with Tony Bruschi. Featuring retired FBI special agent and chief of the counterintelligence behavioral analysis program, Robin Dreek. And I believe he thinks he is a victim. Uh, we'll hear it in this. We're going to hear it also when he talks about his arrest. This is him uh, talking about, uh, you know, using super glue to reattach his finger. Let's take a look. So when I cut my finger that night, um, I had used scissors to cut, you know, the, the super glue bottle had actually, the tip had dried. Sometimes when I have an open super glue bottle, the tip dries and I have to cut the tip. And so I, I had to grab scissors in order to do that. And I inadvertently left blood on the scissors that I forgot to clean off. But once I cut the tip off the super glue bottle, I super glued the tip of my finger together. Um, I believe my healing process is such that I would not have had such a nasty injury for five days. I'm gonna, I, I can't speak to anyone else's healing process, but uh, you know, that is what it is. You mean the, the human healing process that we all have the uh, same? <laughs> I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. The word I believe modifier, I, I believe. Buy. It's like, this is my conjecture about myself. I mean, it, it's it's really bad. And no one's asking about how blood got on the scissors either. It's not even part of the case. It's like... I, I know. Like, I, More I, random I, details. No, like I do Got believe nothing. you use super glue to fix your injury. I don't yeah. believe it was from making uh, chicken fried rice. <laughs> and I also liked how he brought up something that defense... I mean, that the prosecution hasn't even brought up yet. You're probably going to hear this about me, but it's not this. I'm like... Why don't you shut up? <laughs> he can't help just, himself. This next piece here, this is what really hit it home for me of him thinking he is a victim. He's he's talking about when he was arrested and just how how difficult that was. And it really wasn't anything crazy about his arrest um, other than he had tried to hurt himself. But it was it just, oh, it, uh, it, poor me, poor me. Take a, take a look at uh, his testimony uh, on this uh, angle of it. The search warrant was obtained and I got pulled over um, early in the morning on uh, September 7th, 2022. The officers came at me with their guns drawn, um, yelling at me. And I was basically coming from dropping off my stepson at school, getting ready to go home to pick up my uh, one of my other daughters and, and then take her to school. And so they just, I don't know where three police cars just run up on me from the back and I just, just scared. I had no idea what was going on. I mean, yeah, they basically yell at me to just stand. I, I, I can't remember exactly what they said, but you know, they're yelling at me. They patted me down. They handcuffed me. They threw me in the back of a patrol car. Um, I asked them, what I did, I asked them, you know, can I call somebody? Can I do anything? I mean, I did this for over an hour and a half. Just tell me what's going on. Tell me what's, you know, I mean, obviously at this point, I, I had my suspicions because of like the, the whole, you know, all that thing. Um, but they, they wouldn't tell me what was going on. They just left me there. Um, and the whole time, I, my family didn't know where I was. My as far as I know, my daughter was expected for me to come home and take her to school. Um, I was distraught already by that point. It was my understanding that if I went to the Summerlin Area Command for them to just take this DNA and to take photographs of me, that I would be allowed to just come right back to my vehicle and go on my way. He's one of the shiftiest uh, defendants I've seen. It's hard to keep him in frame because he's always going back and forth. And I found that to be a little yeah. bit odd, but then again, all victim, it's all him on that one. Yeah. That's a generally it's a pacifying move to pacify stress. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so self, self, it's a lot, it's very similar to self-soothing, comforting. Sure. 
Yeah. Um, because he, he's under stress. Yeah. Um, because he's trying to he's trying to fabricate on the fly, man. <laughs> So you get word you get word salad like that when you which is I find it interesting because I would have thought since he stayed at the very beginning that he had a lot of time to think about this and basically come up with his alternative universe theory um, that he would have been more solid on it. But the fact he's such a word salad on everything he keeps saying says he really which also Dece- deciphering truth from deception is very, very difficult. Even the best people in the world are only 50% accurate. I never, ever try to do it uh, mm-hmm. because you, you're always just flipping a coin on truth um, versus deception. But when you are, in general, when you're recounting factual events, they have a very even, consistent flow. Mm-hmm. You can actually, if you have someone both uh, orally um, state it as well as in writing. Every every sentence they say will have a very specific uh, timeline. Like from everything they say or write down, they'll generally be about five minutes between this event, five minutes between this event, five minutes between, and it'll have a sequence to it that'll make a lot of sense. And when stating it numerous times, it'll be very consistent. We haven't seen any consistency with how he's describing anything no. that he's doing it is all over the place which means his mind is all over the place which means he's pulling it out of the air yeah yeah and if you're pulling it out of the air he's not remembering real events he's trying to and this is when someone's trying to deceive someone we don't ever intentionally lie we try to tell the truth and what he's trying to do is he's trying to piece together truthful things he knows into a storyline that makes sense that he can describe Mm-hmm. He's not necessarily lying. He's he's piecing together things in a, in a sequence that that's contrived mm-hmm. with facts that are real. That's why it's all over the place. Yeah. And because and so you see, it, he's he's man he's manufacturing this entire timeline because it's all over the place. I thought it was going to be bad. Um, I didn't think he was going to be this bad on the stand. Yeah, this me is, too. This, this is the worst is, I think I've ever seen. It is. It's yeah, this is going to be like for the highlight reel at the end of the year of the worst testimony uh yeah. of, of any case. This this goes into here's exactly what not to do if you're trying to save yourself. <laughs> exactly. You're in the thick of a true crime saga, every detail sinking in, and then wham, a commercial about something you couldn't care less about. It's like being served a microwaved dinner at a five-star restaurant. But it doesn't have to be this way. Go for True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts. With True Crime Today Premium Plus, you get uninterrupted, ad-free episodes, extended interviews that dig even deeper into the muck, and early access so you can brag to your friends. It's like ordering the secret menu at a crime buffet. So, search for True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe and savor every twisted detail without interruption.